Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's problem I got from one of my subscribers and as always I recommend you to pause video here, try to solve this problem on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So here is the problem, a phenotypically normal fruit fly was crossed to another fly whose phenotype was not recorded of the progeny 3 eighths were wild type, 3 eighths had ebony body color one eighth had vestigial wings and one eighth had ebony body color and vestigial wings. Ebony body color and vestigial wings are recessive characteristics and their genes are located on two different autosomes. Based on this information, which of the following is a likely genotype of the parents? And here is the answers to choose from. So basically let's go over the problem one more time. So we are told that 3 eighths were wild type. So what does it mean? It means that 3 eighths, 3 eighths were black, had black body color and normal wings. And normal wings. So I do not, I'm not going to put wings, just um, second trait is normal and second trait stands for the size of the wings. So uh, another phenotype that we see here, 3 eighths had ebony body color. So 3 eighths had ebony body color and nothing is said about size of the wing so we assume that size is normal. So normal. So we already put these two phenotypes and also one eight had vestigial wings and nothing is said about the color and um, that means that body color was black. So one eight was black and had a small wings. And the last phenotype in the progeny, which made one eight, had ebony body color and vestigial wings. So let's uh, also put this phenotype here. So one eight, ebony color and a small wings. So now we have all the phenotypes, uh, including all the traits and now let's uh, group the traits. So for example we have 3 eighths black plus 1 eight black. So we are going to get 4 eighths black. And we also have, let me choose another color, 3 eighths ebony and 1 eighths ebony. So once again, 3 eighths plus 1 eighth would give us 4 eighths, 4 eighths of ebony. In other words, we can say that 4 eighths would be 1 half and uh, 4 eighths here also would be 1 half. So that means we have 1 to 1 ratio of blacks and ebony. And when we can get a trait one to one, and we can get a such trait when one parent would be heterozygous, another one would be homozygous recessive. In this case, uh, we would see in the progeny that 50% um, of the progeny would be black. So if uh, A capital would stand for the dominant uh, trait black and A that is small would stand for the recessive trait and as you see 50% uh, of the progeny going to be homozygous recessive that means going to be ebony and 50% going to be uh, of the dominant phenotype and going to be black. So once again black 
and ebony. So ratio of the trades would be 1, 2, 1. Just what we have found here. Now let me introduce you a forked line method. So we got 50% uh, or one half black and another 50% or one half ebony. Now let's consider second trade. Second trade is the size of the wings. We see that 3 eighths is normal plus 3 eighths also normal. So let's add these numbers. So we have 3 eighths plus 3 eighths would give us 6 eighths. Uh, this is going to be uh, normal size of the wings and uh, we have 1 8 which is going to be small so small and uh, another 1 8 that is also going to be small so we would have 1 8 plus 1 8 which would give us 2 8 and this uh, frequency would stand for the uh, small wings so small so once again what do we have here two eighths in other words would be one quarter right so one quarter here and six eighths uh, would be uh, three quarters three quarters so if we divide this number by two we are going to get instead of six three instead of eight four and what is the ratio? And the ratio would be 3, 2, 1. I hope you can recognize this ratio from simple Mendelian genetics. Uh, we can get such ratio when uh, one parent would be heterozygous. So we already used letter A for the first trait. So now let's use uh, letter B for the second trait. So if one parent would be heterozygous, another parent also would be heterozygous, then uh, in the progeny we can expect following ratios of the phenotypes and genotypes. So we would have capital B, capital B here, capital B, small b here, capital B and small b here, and small b, small b here. Once again, uh, you see ratio uh, as 3 to 1. So 3 to 1. 3 would be uh, normal size of the wings and 1 would be small size of the wings. Now let's return to our forked line diagram. So now we know that uh, 3 quarters going to be uh, normal normal size uh, of the wings and one quarter going to be uh, small and three quarters here normal and one quarter small and now we also have to multiply probabilities. If probability for the fly to be black would be one half and probability to have normal size of the wings would be three quarters, we have to multiply these two numbers. One half multiplied by three quarters would equal to three eighths. So let's check. Black and normal size three eighths. Black and normal size 3 eighths. So uh, let's check the second variant. We would have uh, one half black with small uh, size of the wings. So one half multiplied by one quarter would equal to one eighths. One eighths. So once again black with small wings. So black with small wings as you see makes one eighth. 
so let's check mark and another phenotype would be 50% ebony uh, color of the body of the uh, fly and three quarters out of 50% uh, would have normal size of the wings so one half multiplied by three quarters would give us three eighths so would equal to three eighths now let's check uh, ebony with normal size so ebony with normal size of the wings would make three eighths check mark and 50% also would be ebony and out of uh, this 50% one quarter would have small uh, small wings one half multiplied by one quarter would give us one eighth so this phenotype would make one eighth ebony with small wings ebony with small wings one eighth check mark so what we have found we have found that for the first trait uh, one parent would be heterozygous another one would be homozygous recessive and for the second trait one parent would be heterozygous and another one also would be heterozygous now let's return to our answers and let's find which answer is correct one but first let's um, uh, write down uh, genotypes of the parents so as you remember uh, for the first trait uh, one parent have to be heterozygous and another parent have to be homozygous recessive and for the second trait one parent have to be heterozygous and the second parent also have to be heterozygous and here we have different letters but we know that VG stand for the uh, trait which is size of the wings so in our case this is second trait that is B and that means that E have to stand for the uh, A in our example here but there is another problem we don't know where the E plus so E plus is stand for the dominant allele A or maybe E plus stand for the recessive allele A we don't know it or maybe E stand for the dominant allele A or maybe E stand for the recessive allele A so we have two models here the first model would be this one so let me put equal sign here and this is going to be the first variant when E positive would equal to dominant allele A and E would equal to recessive allele A but another variant would be that E positive would stand for the recessive allele A and E would stand for the dominant allele A so we also have to take this into account so let's hope that uh, we are going to get exactly what we see here just with different letters so for the first trait our uh, first parent have to be heterozygous second parent have to be homozygous recessive in the first answer we see that uh, one parent is homozygous and second parent also homozygous we don't know whether this homozygous dominant and this homozygous recessive or vice versa but we know that uh, parents have to be one heterozygous another homozygous recessive so uh, this is not our answer we can cross out this answer and uh, let's check answer two we see that one parent is homozygous another one is heterozygous and once again we are not looking exactly for this cross let's put uh, that uh, this is going to be parent one and this is going to be parent two but if we would change places for example parent one would be homozygous and for the first trait and heterozygous for the second and we cross with another parent that is going to be heterozygous for the first trait and heterozygous for the second this is going to be absolutely the same like in first example 
we just change places of the parents. So one parent is homozygous, another is heterozygous. Can it be an answer? Yes, it can be. Uh, answer three, one parent is heterozygous and the other parent is homozygous. Can be this answer? Yes, it can be. Just different variants, as you see. And here we see that one parent heterozygous for the first trait and second parent also heterozygous for the first trait. So we cross out this answer. We know that for the first trait one parent is heterozygous, another is homozygous or vice versa. So let's now check second trait, which is uh, going to be uh, size of the wings. Both parents have to be heterozygous for the second trait. So we see heterozygous parent here and heterozygous parent here. As for the variant tree, we see that parent 1 is homozygous and parent 2 is heterozygous. And once again, we are looking when two parents would be heterozygous for the second trait. So we cross out this answer. This is not our answer. And our answer would be answer 2. One more time. Uh, first parent would be homozygous for the first trait and heterozygous for the second. And second parent would be heterozygous for the first trait and heterozygous for the second trait. So as you see, the problem is not uh, difficult by itself. But the way it is formulated, it makes it uh, hard to solve. I hope now you would be able easily to solve analogous problems using this simple logic that I show you today. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. Share this video with your classmates. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.